Hello everyone and welcome in another STM32 tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to talk about the UART of the STM32 blue pill board and we are going to explain the TX behavior or how to transmit the data over UART. Uh, for this you need to add uh, something where uh, uh, you need to add a USB to TTL converter to visualize the data onto your uh, computer and here is the microcontroller of uh, STM32 F103 uh, C8 microcontroller which I am using having 64K uh, memory, flash memory and 8 megahertz oscill uh, crystal oscillator and uh, you need to add 5 volt and ground to your converter, T USB to TTL converter and PA9 is the port which is used for the TX behavior and the data that microcontroller will send to UART will be received on uh, the PA9 and uh, uh, this pin should be attached to the RX pin of your TTL converter. So you need to add this pin and a ground. These two pins will be uh, enough for visualize or to monitor what data you are transmitting on the microcontroller or uh, on the uh, PA port terminal. So let's get started and uh, move on to your uh, uh, heal microvision and start a new project. So now here we have we are in our Keel Microvision 5. Let's open. Uh, let's go to the project menu and create a new Microvision project. Let create a new directory and uh, just name it uh, UART uh, TX Example 01 or any name that you uh, find more convenient for yourself. I am just naming this project UART TX EX01 because I am just going to demonstrate the TX behavior of the STM32. Let's select your microcontroller F103C8 and uh, it, this microcontroller have uh, 64K flash memory in the managed runtime environment. You need to go to the device and uh, uh, you need to add the startup file. It requires Kimsys core because we are using the Kimsys core project so we need this score and uh, click OK. Now your project is created, rename your source group to the user so that you may remember that this is your uh, main file where you can add your user related files. Let's add a new uh, file, name this file main.c uh, and uh, uh, here you, uh, you need to add uh, some main function and uh, after this main function you need to end with a new line and you are ready to compile this project and you will see no errors and no warnings here. So you have successfully created your uh, uh, Kimsys project. You need to add the related header file. Which header file you need to add, you can go to the devices and the STM32F10XH. So if you haven't watched my previous uh, tutorials on STM32, uh, Keel project series where I created a GPIO output. You may need to check out that tutorial before continue this or after uh, viewing this lecture. Uh, this will help you a lot to get started to the Keel Microvision 5 project and the STM32 bare metal programming. So I am using the Kimsys core and I am uh, programming this uh, from scratch. This will help you to understand better the microcontroller and the internal architecture rather than you uh, start playing with the uh, hall abstraction layer or an other SUD peripheral and you uh, pull your hairs because you have no idea what is going underneath. So in this tutorial series, I'm going to talk about what is going underneath or under the hood. So here, if you go to the book section, you need two things uh, alongside your one is the reference manual and one is the data sheet. These two books you need. And uh, when I open up these two uh, things, here in the data sheet, I came down to the page number 31 and here it says that page A9 is UART, UART TX function. So if I am going to transmit anything over UART 1, I am going to use the PA9. So that's the information where I get from. And if I go to the reference manual and in the page number 800 and upward, this is a UART section. 
and uh, this talk about all the uh, related uh, uh, phenomena or the protocol of the RS232. So this is a fast use art and here you can see that without parity that we are using it is a, uh, first of all we send a start bit and after that all the 8 bit and after that uh, and stop one stop bit. So that's the process of transmitting over a single bit and uh, we are not going to uh, talk about the underhood process all we are going to talk about how to configure this in STM32 and is specifically on the STM32 F103 microcontroller although if you are going to use the full USART you may need to extra pins which are the TX uh, or CTX or RTX bits but because we are not going to use these two pins and we are uh, using this in a totally uh, asynchronous mode so we are not using the hardware flow or the synchronous mode so we don't need a CTS and RTR E uh, pins maybe I will talk about in some other lectures about these two pins if you ask uh, so leave a comment if you need the tutorial related to the USART and if you face any error regarding the tutorial series don't forget to comment and also don't forget to subscribe to watch the future lectures on the same series uh, and if we scroll down a little bit, we find out uh, two important uh, registers which we need throughout this. One is SR and one is the CH uh, or uh, register, NBR register, CR1 register. Okay, fine. Uh, let's move on to the overkill and here we need to uh, write one function to initialize the UART. So first of all, we need to initialize the UART. So I'm going to name this function a UART init. And in initialization, uh, as you may remember that I had talked in the first lecture that every peripheral in the STM32 requires you to enable the clock for that peripheral. It means that we need to enable the clock for the UART as well. So how we are going to enable the UART for uh, the STM32 microcontroller? Uh, but, uh, what we are going to do is we are moving on to the RCC. Uh, section uh, which is uh, 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 for clock controlling and here I am going to APB2 and uh, enable and here I am going to enable the UART uh, uh, the clock for my UART and uh, all I need to do is to enable the RCC APB2 ENR and uh, underscore usart one enable and I'm that's it for enabling the usart peripheral uh, clock and uh, now I am ready to use my usart and to uh, because I want to generate uh, uh, send data over serial port so I need some kind of baud rate initialization so how to initialize the baud rate the process of creating a baud rate is very simple in uh, STM32 microcontroller all you have to do is uh, to put some value on BRR register so this register is responsible for generating uh, the correct frequency for the baud rate and how you provide is you provide the system core clock frequency which is uh, 64 megahertz by default and uh, divide this with your desired baud rate and uh, let's put an L out to denote that this is a long uh, value and uh, suppose we are we want uh, 9600 baud rate by default uh, the, which is the default baud rate on most of the uh, peripherals or the other uh, devices which use the serial port or the, prot the same protocol and now we are ready to use the uh, uh, peripheral of the USART one and uh, by this uh, uh, second line with to put a value in the BRR register we are ready to use uh, this USART over 9600 baud rate. The next thing we need to enable the transmit uh, transmission section. To enable that we want to uh, send data over USART we need to configure this on uh, CR1 register which is responsible for configuration and all we need to do is to set the bit for the TX enable 
this bit is the sec uh, third bit of this register so all we have to do is to uh, send and uh, put a one on the third bit so by using this line we are ready to use the usart tx so if we are also concerned with the usart rx i am not going to explain the receiving process in this lecture but i am going to create an other lecture for usart receiving and uh, uh, but to give you a hint how to enable the uh, uh, rx in the usart all you have to do is to uh, enable the second bit of this CR1 register. So uh, after that enabling, you will be all ready to receive the data over UART as well. But we are going to only, we are only going to send data to this pen. So uh, here with using these three or four lines, we are ready to use over UART. But one core thing is left behind, which is to configure the related output GPIO because we know that we are going to use a port A and pin 9 of the GPIO for this user TX section. So we need to configure port A uh, and pin 9 as an output. So how we do this, uh, I had explained in my first lecture. If you haven't seen, just go and check the description and you will go, you will get a lot of detail. But for now, let's stick together and uh, let's configure the clock for and uh, the clock for APB2 ENR register. And uh, the clock is uh, RCC APB2 and uh, IO. P A E N. So that's the reference for configuring the clock for port A. So GPIO A, we need to configure C R H register because H register have the proper configuration for over port P9 and P uh, P A9 and P A10 bits. So all we have to do is 0x0, 0, 0, 0, B, U, L, and uh, because we need four bits, that's why I am writing a four here. And if you are also concerned about the port A10, you can uh, also use the upper eight bits of this registers but we are only going to configure the uh, tx pin which is port a and pin number nine of the gpio so this will configure this to uh, alternate output function to use let you use this pin for transmission okay so we are done with our UART initialization. All you can do, all we can do is call this function in our main and because we are not going to use anything in while one. So I just leave it empty while one loop. <clears throat> Next thing is to create a UART TX function. And I am going to take some value. Uh, let's say you take an uh, integer as then character and uh, you want to transmit this character. So how you do this? Where, well, in the STM32, you need to make sure that the bit of the usart one sr register and the bit number TXE, which is the bit number seven. And uh, you can find out uh, in the reference manual if you go to the SR register. Let's uh, scroll down a little bit and see where your SR register is. Well, 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 well. let's find out. Okay. So the, this is the summary of all the registers. And here we have the SR register. And we can see the seventh bit is about TX enabling. So if we enable, uh, we uh, need to make sure that, that this pin is not one. So how we can do this, we can uh, write um, seventh bit 
checking and uh, just to make sure this is not the one okay so we are done with our while loop and uh, while this is not done after uh, after this wait and uh, making sure that our tx enable flag is clear and uh, we move down and all we have to do is to uh, put on the that over required data that we want to transmit and we need to move that data to dr register and because uh, this uh, register is uh, uh, we just want to make sure that only the lower byte is uh, uh, the byte is transmitted we just and this with 0xff and this will make sure that the value is properly transmit so that's all for transmission and we are ready to call this function here and if you are concerned you can just delay our dummy value and uh, you can just create a little pause here and uh, unsigned int i is equal to zero and let's create a for loop uh, for this um, let's make it for the use of the integer and that's it so let's wait a little while after initializing the you art and you are ready to transmit your value and you can done do this with the urtx function and you can write h okay because we are not uh, created a function to transmit a string we only created to transmit a single letter so we are only transmitting a single letter here okay so okay the spell error here now we are ready to compile this code and uh, our compilation is successful um, after that we need to plug in our microcontroller and uh, st link dongle and uh, just move back to your project section and here you need to right click on the options for target uh, let's make the crystal 8 megahertz and uh, you may create the hex file and if you go to the debug section you need to select the st link uh, debugger and in the settings you need to make sure that it will reset and run and plus press ok and ok so you are ready to compile the code and after compilation you are ready to upload this code onto your microcontroller once you are done you need to uh, properly attach the usb to ttl converter and a uh, software you need to require a proper software for visualizing the data from your microcontroller and i'm uh, going to use an uh, interface of uh, arduino to uh, visualize my serial monitor and uh, when we uh, i open the serial monitor and i press a reset button on my microcontroller okay so it is not sending anything here uh, just make sure your connections are proper okay let me get back to you okay we forget a last thing which is to properly enable the UART so in the CR1 register if we move back in the registers for our microcontroller UART section we will see notice that we have an other bit which is UE which is for UART enabling so we also need to enable this bit to properly use this UART so all we have to do is to enable this bit here UART1 and here the register is a CR1 register and all we need to do is to this bit is bit number 13 to enable the UART and okay so 
let's recompile and re-upload the code once you are done go back to your serial monitor and here you will see your hello okay so although the last bit is uh, something missing and uh, here are some more configuration required and uh, but for now that's all for today's tutorial this will talk about the UART configuration and uh, all you have to do is uh, properly change the value let's try to change this uh, number into some other is 115200 and uh, let's see if we are also able to transmit the data over that baud rate and recompile and we upload and in this section here you need to clear the output and change the baud rate at 115200 and uh, Press a reset button over your blue pill board and this will transmit this on this baud rate as well. Okay, although this is missing some data, so it is, okay, we haven't transmitted the ease here, so we can transmit this as well. So recompile and re-upload the code and go to clear the output, press a reset button again and yes, hello is transmitted over the serial code. So that's all for today's tutorial. If you have any question, uh, just leave a comment. If you face any error, just leave a comment. If you find this useful, a thumb up and if you need more tutorials like this leave a comment and uh, stay tuned and subscribe so that you don't miss any future notification on this tutorial series also in my channel I create a different microcontroller related videos I have 8051 videos and also a G uh, FPGA series uh, so I will keep you updated. So thank you so much and stay tuned.